Good morning again, year four. We're gonna start Wednesday's lesson with a slightly different mental arithmetic question. I'd like you to have a go at this, please. I think of a number, I subtract 47. My answer is 23. What was my starting number? Please stop the video now and have a go. Welcome back, year four. So, Hopefully you are able to visualize the problem. I've got a starting number, I'm subtracting 47, and it gives me an answer of 23. In order to solve this, I use, need to use the inverse operation. So as this is subtraction, the inverse of subtraction is addition. So I'm gonna add 23 to 47, which gives me the answer of 70. Doing that in my head, there's different ways you can do it. I could add the three on to 47 to make 50, add the 20 to make 70. Equally, I could add my 40 and my 20, and I could add my seven, and I could add my three. Obviously, putting those back together, the 60 and the 10 would also give me my 70. Now today's lesson is all about using a written method for addition. If you're someone who normally chooses the Sapphire challenges, then you might want to go onto YouTube and access the Sapphire maths video for Wednesday. How are we gonna be successful today? Well, we are gonna be using our place knowledge of our four digit numbers. We're also gonna still be practicing some estimating. We've done that for two days now. And also we're gonna be using bar models because we know when we can solve problems, bar models are a really good tool for helping us unpick what a problem is asking us. What a good one looks like, our waggle. We have two methods we've been using uh, for our written methods. Most of us have practiced enough that we are now uh, using this column method However, some of us do still prefer the expanded method, which is still a very useful method, makes it very clear and explicit how we're adding up the units or the ones, I'm adding the tens, I'm adding the hundreds, and then we put it back together. However, for the purpose of this input, I'm gonna be modeling this method. Obviously, if you prefer to use the uh, expanded method, then do so when you come to do your task today. Now, if we have a look at my place value grid, I've effectively got two numbers. The first number is showing me 3,000. I've got 300. I've got five tens. And I've got seven ones. And I'm adding that, looking now at the, the bottom number, to 2,000. I've got four hundreds. I've got three tens and I've got four ones. And sorry, that is still on the arrow function. Let's just change that. And obviously really good idea to underline with a ruler rather than actually uh, using uh, an arrow. Okay. Now, before I actually solve my addition calculation, I want to be doing some estimating. So, we talked yesterday about how you could estimate the nearest 10, nearest 100, nearest 1,000. I think in this context, uh, the nearest 100 is gonna be a quick estimate, and I'm gonna be able to actually do it mentally. So, 3,400, and I'm adding to 2,000. 400, I can straight away see that that is going to be 5,800. So my number is going to be slightly bigger or slightly smaller than 5,800 as an answer. Now, in terms of my written method, it does help, I think, to put an extra line underneath there so that we can show our carrying. First of all, looking at the ones column, Seven add four is 11. Now we know that we put a one here and we carry the one underneath for 11. The reason for that 
is if I try to write 11 in this column, what happens is when I write a number under each, in each column, I'm going to end up with a number that is, is too large. I'm going to have too many digits in my answer. If we look at the picture, we can see why we're carrying the 10 across to the tens column as well. And let's not forget that this is our thousands column, this is our hundreds, this is our tens, this is our ones. So I've got here seven ones. I'm adding them to four ones. We know it makes 11. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'm going to carry them across to my tens column. I'll draw another tens counter. So actually I can now see that when I've added them, I've got one in my ones column and I've carried that additional 10 across. That's what I've written underneath just here. Okay, there was my one and obviously you can see the 10 there. Now I'm going to add up my tens column. I've got five tens, that's three tens, plus an extra 10. This is what this says. Five tens, three tens, plus an extra 10. It gives me nine tens. Now I'm going to add my hundreds column. I've got three, add four hundreds, giving me seven. And I've got three thousands, add two thousands, giving me five thousands. So if I look back at my estimate, I can see that my, uh, my estimate was fairly close to the number. It was a good estimate to use. And just so we are familiarizing ourselves with bar models because they are purposeful for solving problems, let me put my numbers into the correct um, parts of the bar. Now, my total is this number here. Therefore, my total needs to go in the long bar, which is going across the page. So we've got 5,791 in my large bar. And then, it doesn't necessarily matter which way around I write these two numbers. Sometimes we wouldn't cut the top bar in the middle. We'd, we'd have one of the sections look slightly smaller, but I haven't done that on this occasion. So we've got 2,434. And adding to that 2,434 is 3,357. So I can see the two bars added together make the long bar. In other words, the two top numbers make the total underneath. If at any point you need to re-see that, you can obviously re-watch the video. I'm not going to show you the bar model now and the place value counters, even the estimating, but I'm just going to show you, if I take this calculation at the top, just something slightly different happens this time. Perhaps some of you looking at the size of the numbers in the ones and the tens column have already figured out what that thing is that happens that is slightly different. So I've got seven add five. I always put the largest number in my head first. Seven add five is 12. I can't fit 12 into here because I've gone over nine. So I'm going to need to carry my 10 underneath. Six add five is 11, add the one, is another 12. I cross it off so I know I've added it on. So I'm again going to need to now carry to the hundreds column this time. 4 add 2 is 6, add 1 is 7, and 2 add 1 is 3. And my estimation that I would have done first would have given me an idea, does my calculation uh, look accurate? But uh, just a reminder that we obviously we can be expected to carry more than once and obviously we've spent a long time practicing these methods in school. Now in terms of your tasks today, the Sapphire Challenge, hopefully would have watched the video on their input, looking at different strategies they can use to tackle their calculations. The Bronze Challenge today are very much adding three digit numbers to three digit numbers. There's quite a few calculations there, but don't be put off. You'll find in task A there isn't any exchanging at all, and that you can do them fairly swiftly. The silver challenge moves on to four digits, add four digit numbers, and there will be exchanging. And if you're deciding to go for the gold challenge, then uh, you've got more exchanges, but equally you're also adding three 
lots of four digit numbers, but something that did cause problems when we were at school. So please take care, check in your calculations. With all of uh, your calculations, please today, could you either use a calculator at home or click on the link, which is actually on the top of your page, which will load up an online calculator. Hope you enjoyed today's maths. See you again for more tomorrow.